regular session of council. Today is June 16th, 2014. We will begin this evening's meeting with a public hearing in which we have a speaker, Jesse Powers, speaking on behalf of HABCAP and the Community Development Block Grant. Thank you. Good evening. This will be public hearing number two for the Community Development Block Grant um, CDBG also allocation program. Um, the second public hearing is to discuss, um, to give the public an opportunity to comment on the projects that were discussed in public hearing number one and um, are going to be proposed for the, the CDBG application for fiscal year 2014. Okay. The City of Athens is eligible for $75,000 of fiscal year 2014 CDBG allocation program funding, provided the City meets applicable program requirements. Um, the first public hearing was conducted on May 5th, 2014, um, and the following activities are under consideration for inclusion in the City's al CDBG allocation application based on citizen input and local officials' assessment of needs. Um, activity one would be sewer facilities improvements. The CDBG allocation amount funding that is proposed for that project is $60,000, with the CDBG critical infrastructure at $280,000, with the City of Athens contributing an additional $114,000. Um, the alternate activity should the sewer facilities improvements project um, not be funded on the competitive level would be the parks and recreation facility improvements and that will the budget for that will use the CDBG allocation funding of $60,000. The fair housing, the City of Athens fair housing and administration of the CDBG allocation program is budgeted at $15,000. In addition to the City of Athens and in addition to the CDBG allocation program, the City of Athens is eligible to apply for a competitive set-aside known as the Critical Infrastructure Grant. Um, and this year, the City has chosen to um, apply for that for the activity of sewer facilities improvements. Mm -hmm. The Critical Infrastructure Grant is for a single component infrastructure project, um, which has been identified um, as sewer facilities improvements, which would improve the Depot Street lift station. The budget for that would be $280,000 of the critical infrastructure grant, should it be funded by the state. And the CDBG allocation, again, will be $60,000, with the City of Athens contributing an additional $114,000. The Fair Housing and Administration for the City of Athens critical infrastructure grant would be $20,000. Um, all activities have met national, uh, meet national objective of benefiting primarily low to moderate income residents and or limited clientele or the prevention and elimination of slum and blight. Are there any questions or comments? Yes. Just a comment that I think we had noted previously that on the lift station, what that does is um, it's that particular lift sta station services most of the west side and also the hospital and um, Ohio University also. So it's, it's important for our right. effective functioning of for the city. Yes, it will definitely be benefiting two um, majority low to moderate income block groups within the city, um, as well as the infrastructure itself is considered blighted at its current condition. Okay. Are there Thanks. other questions or comments from council members or the city administration as well as the public? We've discussed this, um, and um, you know we're hopeful on that critical infrastructure. And we'll use our CDBG as matching, and if not, I feel that we've come up with a good alternative, which would be the accessible playground surface at the front of the community center playground. So, any other? Well, and th right. thanks to HapCap for helping coordinate our, you know, all of this. And it's our pleasure. Thank you. Thank any you, other, folks. Any other questions or comments to the public? It's an opportunity to be engaged in the process. Well, if not, thank you, Ms. Powers. I appreciate yeah, the opportunity this evening. Thank you. I do believe that we had a uh, signing sheet going around as well, so please make sure those in attendance this evening that you're able to verify 
that you were here. Thank you. Moving along, we also have a transportation committee on this evening's agenda. Um, I believe that Member Pappy is speaking on behalf of that. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. Mm -hmm. um, we have a presentation tonight by uh, regarding Bounty on the Bricks. And um, before we have you come up, you know, you need to sign in and, and all that kind of thing. But before you come up, um, I want to say congratulations. It sounds like you sold out your tickets for this year's event already. We You have. And so um, I just want to say that we're, we're moving into our second year of this event. It uh, was quite a success last year, it sounds like. And as you present this evening, I'm hoping that you can talk a little bit about um, the donation process and, and all that kind of thing, where the monies are going, how what the breakdown is. You know in the press here lately there's a lot of uh, information out there about not-for-profits and how much goes to this and how much goes to that. So if you could talk a little bit about that tonight, that would be great. And then... Um, you know, I just wanted to say um, that Athens is a very giving community, or a very open community, and this Bounty on the Bricks um, fundraiser is uh, for food insecurity. And um, I just also wanted to say that I think there, there just needs to be some sensitivity around the issue regarding here we're having this wonderful organized event on Court Street, and um, yet there are still a lot of people in our community who are food insecure. And I just would like to hear a little bit more about the philosophy and and um, just so it's out there for the community, a thing to discuss. So are you both, Susan and Cheryl, are you both coming up? Or? I think Susan's going to Susan's going to do this. Thanks, Susan. She's got all so just introduce yourself and tell us about Bounty on the Bricks for the second year. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Susan Urano. I'm the executive director of the Athens Foundation. And last winter, a year and a half ago, Cheryl Sylvester came to us and said, we have this kooky idea that we could do an event like they do in other parts around the country. Um, uh, and we said we would love to help with that. So last year, um, several of you were at the event. Um, it was a sold out event last year. We raised $75,000, um, $25,000 from the event itself. And then we got matching grants from the Sisters of St. Joseph Charitable Fund and the Osteopathic Heritage Foundation of Nelsonville. And they are on board to do that again this year. Um, we take no administrative fee from this event, so the whole $75,000 went back to 18 food pantries in the southeastern Ohio region, um, and they purchased things like commercial refrigerators, walk-in freezers, helped fix their trucks, um, things that they needed to be able to deal with fresh and frozen food, which they're not as equipped to handle. Uh, this year... Um, before our ordinances were passed. Uh, the event sold out in four days. We have about 50 people on the wait list. Um, we're limited, I think, by the um, chef's ability to prepare decent food. Um, right, without having a heart attack. Um, the event is a fundraiser, and I'm like, why are you having an event where you're charging $75 and a lot of people can't come? My answer is, it's a fundraiser. You know, without this kind of um, high ticket price and matching funds, we would never have been able to put $75,000 back into um, the food pantries throughout the region. Um, we're even playing around with ideas of how to expand uh, the event in creative ways next year. I don't know if we'll be able to do that or not. Um, our expenses are fairly low, and they're covered <coughs> by sponsors primarily. Um, we have about $12,000 in sponsors um, that help cover the cost of the event. Um, we pay for the food. Everything else is pretty much donated, so that's how we're able to do it. 
So Susan, um, you said, is, are the food pantries in Athens County or are they regional? They're regional. So we are expanding out of Athens County. Right, because the Sisters of St. Joseph supports three counties in southeastern Ohio, and the Osteopathic Heritage Foundation, I think, supports seven. So okay. we have encompassed their county regions as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was one question that I had been hearing from people is that, you know, we tend to be a little, our economic diversity is a little bit better in this county. And right. what yeah. about helping some of the surroundings? So that answers that yeah. question. Yeah. A question, if I may, that I have, you know, seventy-five thousand dollars is is huge. That was uh, that you achieved last year, and then so it was a seventy-five thousand dollar match that came from. No, it was we raised twenty-five thousand from the sale, and then two gotcha. more twenty-five thousand okay. dollar matches. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then on track again within four days yeah. <laughs> this year of the yes. same thing. So it's going to look like seventy-five thousand dollars. Again, total this year. Yeah, maybe even. Well, maybe I don't. Uh, yeah, it'll be around there. They and may it, do a little bit more. I don't know. Has it expanded to to it's more food pantries this time? It's expanded a little bit. Um, I think we added two tables. So. Twenty eight and three sixty. Three sixty. But what I, I guess what I'm asking is, did the number of food pantries will that expand this year as well? No, there's thinking? a limited but, amount of food pantries in the region, and we work with okay. the food bank to get the word out and identify them. And we actually did a grant writing workshop with them last year before we gave the money because they had to do a little mini grant to say how they were going to use the funds, and so we work closely with the food bank on that so are these all are the food banks all ones that are are registered with the southeastern ohio yeah food there's bank? a requirement they have to be part of the food bank okay because that helps with food safety and food regulations and and all that kind of thing mm -hmm. okay. and there's a more of an assurance that they will execute what they said they were going to do even that being said we had i think we had one food pantry close and gave the money back and um, another one had to change what they were doing because they're all volunteers. I certainly appreciate the fact that I mean it is a fundraiser. I get that, and I I am still just blown away by the amount of money. That, and, you know that to me signifies how philanthropic a lot of Athenians are to watching out for the rest of our county, surrounding counties. You know this is, and for anyone who's been to Kilvert or to. Um, Lot Ridge or any of the other food pantries around here, you know that we're talking about some 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 struggling struggling small communities and townships. So right. I I attended the event last year. I enjoyed it. Um, I am not surprised by the success again this year of seeing this go through. Um, this is something that I highly support for its cause. I, uh, I too uh, applaud the efforts and I'm excited that it's taking place again. The, the photo was great. It's <coughs> to see the, the, and hear the support in the community. Last year I was disappointed I couldn't attend. I was out of town. I'd already had plans. Um, I'm happy that the tickets sold so quickly this year. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to acquire one. But let me know if there's a table for cousins or <laughs> third okay, cousins. All or right. Maybe I, I can we'll reserve a spot. happy to put you on the waiting <laughs> list. <laughs> Thank Susan, you. yes, Jim. Can you remind us what the date is, please? It is August 9th. It's a Saturday, I believe. It's two weeks before OU starts. Thank you. Okay. Any other council questions or administration questions? I I also want to thank you for your support last year because we couldn't have done it without the city help. Um, between Ron Lucas and Rich Capitelli and all those folks, they were just, and Paula, they, they put in a lot of hours, so thanks. And I think that's just one comment to make is that we do close our streets for these different events and it's not like we charge anyone a fee. But we're and, the only one that gives back. And, and they're, Amber. <laughs> <laughs> She means gives back to the community. In the <laughs> but, you know, it's just that, you know, I, I think some people quite wonder about that. Well, you just oh, close your city street, absolutely. you know, and, yeah. and everything's closed down. So it does take time and effort on the city staff and um, and all that kind of thing. I know there was a fire issue there, but that's all been worked out. Some of these other things have been fire access issue is what I should say. Yeah. 
Um, uh, just the point of order being that it, um, August 9th is a date, and they'll need the suspension and what have you. They they technically need to get their F permit in 30 days in advance of that. Event, so perhaps by the Monday, July 7th. So that's just really <coughs> under the wire. Mm -hmm. It's been sitting on Paula's desk for a while. Right. You know, I. I I too want to give accolades to the city for what they did last year in, in cleaning up. When you think about it, a table that's that long and that many chairs <laughs> and being able to open the streets back up in a timely fashion, not to mention the army of, of high school students, I believe it was, that were out picking up, team. helping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was timing. It was impressive Zero. to watch that come together and be torn down so quickly. So it's Zero waste event. That's awesome. That's I mean, tremendous. I think that's going to just go with everything now in Athens County. Zero waste event. It'll be an ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> they would like it to be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You. Any other questions from folks? We know about the suspension later on. Thank you, Susan. Okay. I have one miscellaneous item that. Um, we did have a successful bid, <laughs> and uh, next week we're going to need to talk about the West Union Street uh, infrastructure improvements, and um, we're going to need to move forward because there was a bid, so likewise they can begin July 1, and all that's going to have to run really quickly. So uh, next week we'll have an ordinance, well, we'll discuss it, but I think we're going to have an ordinance special session to begin that ordinance. And do we do that after the committee hearings or before? Yes, okay. After. after. So we will have a special session for Union Street and Ordinance readings. Anything else on that, Paula? Um, no, that's correct. Uh, you know, it came in, uh, but under the engineer's estimate, 10% uh, so that we're going to be able to award it. But we just need a few more dollars from the different funds. We'll be working with the auditor's office to determine that. Um, but, you know, like what happened with Richland Avenue, with no bids, even with this case, we want to get this built. And the, and they, the earliest we can do it is July 1, so we're asking for we can have the, everything in place so that we can award on July 1st. And I think everyone understands that in terms of a special circumstance. When you have outside bidders coming in, you know, we can move forward with the ordinances as they need to go because we are in a tight line schedule here in Athens when it comes to our construction. So... Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. And along those lines, if I recall correctly, this is a project that we, the West Union Street project, we had looked at considering doing last year, mm -hmm. but in consideration of the efforts to fix the bridge and desire not to tie up all of our streets, we pushed it back a year. Is that correct? Correct. And we may, I don't know if we'll be ready next Monday, but we, we are looking at how we reattack Richmond and whether it be, you know, um, a rebid of components that we do here this fall and then just have a longer period of time. So we'll be bringing that back too. Okay. So. Thank you. There's been a lot of discussion about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's it for transportation. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Happy. So moving into our regular session, our regular, regular session of City Council, I am acting President Pro Tem. President Sands is our acting mayor. Uh, I am able to vote on the uh, issues presented this evening. We have uh, establishing a quorum of six members present this evening. Uh, Member Fall is not here. Disposition of minutes. Is there a motion to accept this evening's uh, minutes of the regular session held June 2nd, 2014? Mr. President, I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the minutes. All those in favor of accepting the minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Thank you. The minutes are accepted. Moving along to communications. Um, are there any reports or communications within uh, elected officials? Oh. Well, I guess I'm <laughs> sorry. How about just regular communications, then we'll go to elected officials. Yeah. Um, yes, I'm... Uh, Reisner. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, 
I think all of us have been getting some emails from constituents and other people concerning the uh, reports that came out in the Athens Master and the Columbus Dispatch about uh, public records and people trying to get them and having a hard time. And I was wondering if the administration or anyone would like to speak to that or if someone could remind us exactly what people are supposed to do when confronted with a request for a public record. Thank you, Member Reisner. Any members of? If you're asking the administration, I would ask. Um, it, um, I have read that. I'm still um, looking into the um, issues and interactions that may have occurred with the mayor's office. I would ask that you would direct reporters to me, and I'll be responding. And yes, indeed, we do all have public record policies. Um, and I have one for the mayor's office we can um, supply. And I believe uh, Law Director Pat Lang have a few statements. Yeah, I mean, as to what you should do when a public record is requested, you should uh, give it over. I should oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> is that complicated? <laughs> well, there, there are a couple of threshold questions in any public records request, and the service safety director is absolutely right that uh, you know, there's not one citywide policy on this. Every department is responsible for maintaining its own public records. Uh, each department has its own public records policy and its own person designated within that office to be the person responsible for dealing with a public records request. So the first uh, question uh, is, you know, obviously not every record uh, that exists uh, in government here or elsewhere qualifies as a public record for purposes of the public record statute. So the first question is, is what has been requested a public record? Uh, if it is, then there's a, a second uh, level of analysis which involves there are uh, a few uh, narrowly tailored exceptions under Ohio law for, um, uh, for non-disclosure, so which a city could say, uh, because of uh, one of these exceptions, we are not going to produce the record that has been requested. However, in the event that a city or any other government entity does that, you have a responsibility to explain to the requester what exception you're claiming and cite the legal authority for that. Um, that said, but the, by and large, the vast majority of public records requests uh, are for public records and uh, for which there is no exception. So the best policy uh, for this, and this is certainly the, the policy that we followed uh, in my office and that I would, would uh, encourage uh, other offices to follow as well, is that you, number one, uh, acknowledge right up front uh, receipt of that request. So you say, I, I received your request and then give that person some idea of how much time it's going to take to respond to that. Now, sometimes it may be something you can go and get immediately and produce the document. If that's the case, you should do that. Um, if it's a, a larger request or if it's for a document that may not be housed in the office or that you may have to go uh, into the computer system to retrieve, uh, it may take some number of hours or, or days uh, sometimes to do that. Uh, but the important thing is to you should be constantly communicating with uh, whatever person made that request so that they have some idea of uh, what the expectation is going to be as to when they can receive the information that they requested. Um, a couple of uh, things which I've, I've read, and I don't remember whether this was in the messenger or in the dispatch or, or, or whether it was even dealing with the city, but I was one of the things that you, you absolutely cannot do is, is ask for the identity of the person making the request. Uh, there, there's no uh, requirement under law that, uh, that a person identify themselves to request a public record. Um, there was also a con something that I had read uh, alluding to the fact that someone was asked to fill out a form. Uh, that is also something that is not required uh, under the Act. So uh, if in some, anyone can walk in off the street and make a verbal request, and you know that is, that is a valid public records request under Ohio law. So that's just kind of the, the brief overview of that, and in light of uh, some of the things which, uh, uh, which have, have been reported upon, I'll, I'll be directing a, a memo to all city departments uh, basically along those lines and going into a little more detail as to proper ways to handle public records requests as those come in. So, thank you. Auditor Heck. I was just going to comment that none of those requests came to my office. Um, we handle public records requests weekly, pretty much. Um, and as Law Director Lang said, the very vast majority of what we deal with is public record. And I would say particularly in other offices, um, in our office, income tax information is not public record at all. And there are severe fines, personal fines, for people in my office who violate that. Uh, there are a few items relating to our payroll files that we keep on people that are not public record. Um, however, salaries and whether you work there or not are all public record. And so we're used to dealing with those, although some do come in that are very vague, and I have um, consulted with the law director's office about that. Um, as he said, um, you, 
can't, you don't have to identify yourself, you don't have to say why you want it, um, you don't have to fill out anything. However, we are allowed to ask them to clarify if we're not really sure what they're looking for. Um, but if they don't want to, then, um, you know, but if, if it is too broad and we don't know how to, how to um, respond, we can tell them that. Um, and usually the person requesting it, it will help, you know, if they can because they want information. And um, so uh, we also are not required to drop what we're doing to respond to them unless, as Law Director Lang said, some of it's easy enough. Somebody calls and says, you know, how much does so-and-so make? <coughs> you know, that's, you know, 10 seconds on the computer and you, we can give it to them over the phone. So it, it just depends. and. Um, you know, I'm pretty clear with the people that work in my office uh, how to handle that. <coughs> if they're unsure or uncomfortable, um, they come to me. Uh, reporters are supposed to come to me. <laughs> um, and so um, I just think that there are some offices that don't deal with them probably as often as we do, and it makes it a little bit hard. And um, so I was a, a little bit surprised at that because um, I hear about this at every conference I go to. It's it's a uh, it's a very big deal to to you know work with people for that. And, and that's in the auditor's office. And my just having worked uh, with with Kathy for a number of years on this has been excellent in the way that they process uh, their records, or their public records requests. I would also say that there is a an obligation on the part of the requestor to at least state with with reasonable um, sufficiency what, the, what exactly that that person is asking for. So if, if it is too vague or too broad, then the appropriate response from the governmental agency is to say, you know, I, we don't understand exactly what you're asking for. Can you be more specific? And, and in, in most cases, uh, people are, are more than willing to, to try to explain what it is they're after. And, and uh, oftentimes, the other thing that you'll run into is folks that are uh, requesting information as opposed to a record. Uh, so you know, again, Ohio law is clear that we that we have an obligation to produce a public record. So that's which is not the same thing necessarily as someone coming in and saying, uh, you know, and requesting a piece of information. Um, if they can't uh, identify a certain kind of document or record that is kept, then there's not a uh, you know. For instance, if they just come in and ask you a question, um, you know, there's not necessarily an obligation on the part of the person in that office to to answer that question or to uh, provide the information if it doesn't exist somewhere as a as a record. So. Um, but overall, it, it, again, just in my experience during the, the uh, seven years, that uh, six plus years that I've been here, uh, most of the departments that I've worked with that have brought me public records requests uh, for, to ask for, for advice on how to handle it have, have handled them uh, uh, appropriately, uh, overwhelmingly so. Um, but obviously that's not uh, apparently the case uh, at all times. Thank you, Law Director Lang. And, and thank you, Auditor Hecht. Member Reisner? I'm just wondering if this uh, kind of problem could be fixed just by more in-house training, something more broad than just, I'm, I'm sure the memo will be of, of help, at least to the department heads, but getting it trickled down to the department. Well, in Ohio law actually requires uh, training by all elected officials uh, to send someone from their office. So the person in my office who's designated as the point person right. you know, has to go with a training from the uh, attorney general's office as a certification right. process. Um, well, I'm, th I'm thinking more of, say, um, um, the recreation department. Okay, you have many employees. Uh, you don't know who might be at the front desk when someone comes in and requests something. Uh, they're not sure. And they're not sure. They don't know who to turn to. Uh, what, what do they do? And that could cause confusion. And it could, could create the impression that they're hedging, that they're trying to not answer the questions, not, not give you the information. So That's an outstanding point is that, again, while one person is designated uh, to do that, especially if you're in a larger department or, or have people that are staffing the front desk that don't often deal with records requests, uh, you know, to them they might just think, well, this isn't my problem, so they just ignore it or, or pass it off to someone else. So there probably should be some information out there in all the departments about, hey, if you get a request for a record, this is the point person that you direct that request toward. Exactly. That's an excellent point. Yeah. Unfortunately, my understanding is this hasn't been an issue in Athens. That's my understanding, correct? No. No, it is. No, an it issue. was an issue in Athens. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, that was part of the dispatch article that went out across the state. Kathy, I appreciated that you say that you post this information, and I appreciated that in your follow up to council members. I think that's important for the public to see those. We're supposed to. <laughs> I think, Pat, I don't know if you're the it's one that said around that template. Well, yeah. yeah. That to stand around, I think most of us use that. We could change it a little bit, but uh, each department head was to sign off on that. We're required to 
put a poster up uh, saying that we have our public records policy available. And um, yeah, I think most offices have them. Um, but as you said, if the person who happens to be the first person somebody sees when they walk in the door um, and they haven't been there very long or, you know, uh, there aren't very many public records requests uh, posed to that office, uh, they might be thrown a little bit. Um, I'd say the most important thing that I would get out there to everybody in every department is don't ignore them. Right. If you don't know what to do, go to your supervisor or someone. Uh, just don't ignore them. It's a fire drill. <laughs> Good I point. mean, you, yeah, need really. to help. Yeah. You, need, you need to find somebody to help you. Okay. Just quickly, um, talking about street closings, um, Boogie on the Bricks is uh, happening Saturday coming up, uh, 21st, and street will be closed two blocks. It's just one. Real quick. Three. They have the two stages, so it's Union all the way to State. I'm sorry. Yeah. I had to think a moment. Yeah. So it's a fairly lar large event um, associated with Brew Week. No? No, they separated. They divorced. But oh, they've okay. got their own thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're divorced. <laughs> Okay, they're Thank separated. You. Okay. Uh, other communications from council members? Um, I have a couple. Uh, one is that the Commission on Disabilities is meeting this Wednesday at 5.30 at the community center, which is where we, we usually meet, uh, and that's open to the public for anyone to come and attend those meetings. As well, and this is related, the there's an ad hoc committee uh, that was put together to look at the emergency preparedness plan for individuals living with disabilities, which falls under the commission. And that group is meeting uh, June 23rd at 1 p.m. here in the city building. And I really encourage individuals to attend that one because that's that's a rather large project to where I've mentioned before, where we have gotten involvement from HAPCAP because under HAPCAP, as some of you are familiar, there's Meals on Wheels, there are, there's Athens on Demand, there's the Go Bus, there's a lot of entities which become integral pieces to an effective emergency preparedness plan, uh, as well as having individuals from Beacon School involved. Um, and uh, there's the MOU, the uh, MOU that covers this, the joint work for the Commission on Disabilities with the President's Presidential Advisory Council on Disabilities and Accessibility Planning, which is an Ohio University entity, um, which is one of the major charges is to look at a uh, initially what was to be a city community-wide emergency preparedness plan, but in talking with the Emergency Management Agency Director, Fred Davis, um, it would behoove us to have one that's large and, and global enough to cover the entire county. So. I really encourage the citizens uh, to who might want to be involved in, in that type of planning. It'll be a long time running that we have this kind of planning, but it's important that we get citizen involvement and input into uh, how this plan should unfold. Thank you. Any, uh, any other we'll do communications? One okay. other item. Um, actually, it's more uh, communications related to our cable um, situation people are discussing that their cable for the government channel is being turned off so they're not able to um, access the government channel through the Time Warner basic contract they're giving they're being given a warning and they have to buy a special box in order to do that so they'll have to add on to their package apparently I don't have the specific details but apparently they are warning them in advance that this is going to happen which I think is probably a concern for us it should be and I'm a little bit of taking it back because I thought that the franchise fees pay for you know some public yeah, access that's the first time we can look into it. Thank you. So we no, I have that. I can tell you right now, there's no more government channel post. There's a just a one-page thing that comes up and says you have to contact them mm. for a box to get that channel. And it's it's the there's government channel. It's our Athens community uh, channel. Cable access. Yeah. They're charging for the box. Mm -hmm. And there's a few other channels. Well, I think not, Chicago, then they're, then they're, they're taxing the viewer. That, that's essentially a tax then. Part of their fee, they can't I guess. do that. We have a contract with. 
probably about different. five channels that we used to get that, that have that screen that comes up now. That started mm -hmm. about a week ago. And thank you, Paula, for looking into it. Thank you. It may require a little stronger action. I'll just have to sure. Okay. Um, to starting. Yeah, that's right. And then you have one. Okay, one more, one more thing to, to remind council members. Uh, tomorrow is our luncheon with President McDavis uh, at uh, noon at, at Baker Center. Um, and think of some really cogent questions to ask. Um, and um, so I <laughs> meant to to say that earlier, and I just remember to do this. Thank you. Now, that is considered a meeting of council, isn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> so it's open to the public. Correct. That's true. Ooh. Okay. Just want to be up front. And we'll again, it's in there. the yeah. president's yeah. dining room in Baker Center. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Yes. I think, is that on the third floor? Third floor? Second floor? Main floor. Main, Main floor. Off, fourth off floor. Court. Yeah. The off court. president's yeah. dining room. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I think mm -hmm. that's off court. Walk in, turn right. Walk in, Honors off court, turn right. right. To the lounge. Yeah. Acting Mayor Sands for reminding us, <laughs> stole my thunder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what am I worth? Are there any other reports and communications from other elected officials? Anything else we haven't covered? President Pro Tem yeah. Butler, I would like to share the front page of today's Athens News. Was this today? Um, yes. yes, it's Monday. Um, for a bit of great news, um, but Athens is one of the 16 semi-finalists in a contest called the Road to Wellville. And this just highlights the great work that many community agencies are doing around Athens to promote healthy choices and healthy lifestyles. And so I just came from a meeting at the community center um, to move forward in this process um, on behalf of the Healthy Communities Coalition and Live Healthy Appalachia. And, um, you know, this speaks to some of the work that we are doing as far as our, our engineer's office, making sure that we're integrating pedestrian ways and bikeways into any anytime we do a new streetscape project, um, you know, looking forward into our, our parks and, and rec master plan. So, you know, we're doing good things and we're getting attention for it and so hopefully this will enable us to do even more good things for the health of our community and the health of our region great thank you member conklin yeah, it was over the last week uh, member patterson and i were involved with the conference on the local food movement and i believe uh, deputy auditor sorry deputy service safety director ron lucas was uh, uh, present as well um, and, and again echoing those same ideas and values in our community, which we're blessed to have. Any other communications from elected officials? Okay, we're moving on to ordinances for third reading. Ordinance 4514, an ordinance closing a portion of Court Street between Washington and Carpenter on Saturday, July 19th, 2014, from 10 a.m. to midnight for Ohio Brew Week. Introduced by Councilmember Pappy. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to uh, adopt 4514. Second. And um, we're going to have a series of several ordinances uh, related to Brew Week, uh, which is another event um, that we host here in Athens. And um, we talked about it at length, but basically it's a it's a uh, event uh, for uh, brewers, beer brewers, all over Ohio, and they Boston. locate themselves here for, um, and this is the final uh, event for that week. So we'll be closing uh, Court Street from Washington to Carpenter, and this is a bit of a change. It's July 19th, and this is a bit of a change from prior years, but um, they are going to be closing that last block the far north block of Court Street for the event. Thank you, Mayor Pappy. We have a motion and a second to accept Ordinance 4514. All those in favor please uh, of accepting, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ordinance has been adopted. 
Ordinance 4614, an ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code Title VII, Section 7.05.26B1, City Garage Metered Parking Rates and Regulations, on Saturday, July 19, 2014, from 10 a.m. to midnight for the Ohio Brew Week event. Again, introduced by Councilmember Pappy. Thank you. I move to adopt 4614. Second. And again, this is uh, for the parking related to um, the Brew Week event. Thank you. A motion and a second to accept Ordinance 4614. All those in favor of accepting the ordinance, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ordinance is adopted. Ordinance 4714, an ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code, Chapter 11.04, vending, peddling, and soliciting to allow vending in a designated area on July 19th, 2014, during the Ohio Brew Week event. Introduced by Council Member Pappy. Thank you. Um, I move to adopt 4714. Second. And um, this allows our vendors to be in designated areas there near the closing of the street. We have a motion and a second to accept Ordinance 4714. All those in favor of accepting the ordinance, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 4814, an ordinance suspending the enforcement of Athens City Code Section 1304.10, unnecessary noise in the downtown area on July 19th, 2014, for Ohio Brew Week, introduced by Council Member Pappy. Thank you. I move to adopt 4814. Second. And uh, of course, with any event of this nature and live music, <laughs> um, we're going to have noise. So we will suspend our um, noise ordinance for that period of time. Comments? Just a brief one about the noise. The, the stage arrangement this year is facing south down Court Street as opposed to last year where it was facing north up Court Street towards our more dense neighborhoods. So that has been a change. But Thank you. worth mentioning. We, we appreciate the event organizers help on that. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to accept Ordinance 4814. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 4914, an ordinance establishing a glass-free drinking container zone during the Ohio Brew Week event. Introduced by Council Member Pappy. Thank you. Um, I move to adopt 4914. Second. And goes without saying, it'll be a glass-free event. <laughs> Thank you. Again, we have a motion and a second to accept Ordinance 4914. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 5114. An ordinance amending Athens City Code Title III Administrative Provisions, Chapter 3.07, Administrative Departments, Boards, and Commissions, Section 3.07.74A, Establishment of Environment and Sustainability Commission, which was introduced initially by Council Member Fall, who will be speaking on her behalf this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. I move adoption of Ordinance 5114. Second. And what this particularly does is amends um, a provision in our city code for the Environmental Sustainability Commission that formerly uh, was defined as having five city residents to be appointed by the city, Athens City Council. And what the new statement will say is five members shall be electors of the city and two members reside outside the corporation limits. Mm -hmm. We're getting a little bit broader picture for our Sustainability Commission. Thank you, Member Nisley, for assisting us there. Any questions or comments on the ordinance? We have a motion and a second to accept Ordinance 5114. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 
Opposed, same sign. The ordinance has been adopted. We're now moving on to ordinances for first reading. Ordinance 5414. An ordinance to increase the city income tax by 10 hundredths percent, 0.10 percent, per annum for a period of 20 years and authorizing the question of the increase to be placed on the ballot at the next general election to be held on November 4th, 2014, and declaring an emergency. Uh, introduced initially by all members of council, but I believe council member Nisley, correct, will be speaking this evening. I'll start with some comments. Uh, just a few minutes of uh, discussion, since it is such an important uh, ordinance that we're moving forward tonight. Uh, last month, uh, you may remember that we heard from Athens Recreation Advisory Committee chairperson and former Mayor Rick Abel as he presented to Council uh, the results of a long-range planning process. Um, and we'd also um, had a lot of citizens participate in a public meeting at the community center, um, offering their input and re um, comments on this long-range plan. Our Council Committee discussion last week centered around several options um, about the levy. And what I think became clear to, the, to us as council members and city administration and the Recreation Advisory Committee um, is the following. Um, several of these are as facts. The existing levy for our community center expires on December 31st, 2016. This current levy supported the construction equipment and furnishing of the community center, so solely the community center. And the long-range plan that emerged calls, I think, for support of a broadened arts, parks, and recreation program for the city of Athens. So what council is presenting tonight is an ordinance for one-tenth of one percent income tax levy to support this broader program. And that will encompass expenses associated with the construction equipment and furnishings of a swimming pool which would replace our 1972 uh, version of the pool that we have right now. Uh, it would also provide for accessibility to all playgrounds, trails, and facilities. Provide for maintenance, operation, and staffing of existing and new arts, parks, and recreation facilities and grounds in, in the city of Athens. So this ordinance calls for a new levy to begin on January 1st, 2016 for a period of 20 years. Um, this would allow, as did our most recent street levy, one year where both the current levy for the community center and the new levy for the arts, parks, and recreation would be levied to collect the income tax. However, there has been some discussion that if we do end up paying off the costs of the old levy, we could actually end that one uh, prior to its ending date. So what's that mean for citizens and what they're thinking about as they plan for expenses? Uh, the one-tenth of one percent would be uh, $30 income tax for a person reporting $30,000 worth of income um, on their city income tax. And then passage of this ordinance and resolution, which begins, uh, and the resolution would actually begin next week. This is our ordinance that we're reading for the first time tonight. Would allow councils to submit language to the Athens County Board of Elections by August 6th. Once submitted to the Board of Elections, the proposal can be placed on the fall ballot for citizens to decide on the Arts, Parks, and Recreation levy. And I think I can speak on behalf of some of the council members, and I'm sure there'll be other comments that will be added, but um, we're presenting this after consideration of the long-range plans and also the recommendations of the Recreation Advisory Committee. Thank you, Member Nisley. Comments. It's my understanding that there's been a suggestion um, by former Mayor Abel to include the language property acquisition. And that's primarily related to trails. I don't know if you wanted to speak to that. Thank you, Paula, and, sure. and thank you, uh, former Mayor Abel. First off, I want to thank uh, council members for getting this forward, and at least something that the advisory board has been talking about for a year and a half, the two years that I've been on the, on the board. Uh, so I do want to, on behalf of all of them, thank you. I am concerned, uh, and the reason we had put in our recommendation other uh, projects as approved by ordinance uh, to be in there was it was sort of a catch-all. And I know sometimes you don't like to go to the voters with catch-alls, but part of our, our concern has been that we're, there were a number of things when we went through the plan that if we had the money we would like to do, at some point, 
during the term of, of this uh, tax. And the, the law director and auditor can tell me if some of these would be included, but how long have we talked about the uh, old airport hangar that sits on East State Street that is our maintenance facility, uh, and we probably needed better maintenance facility for the arts, parks, and recreation. Uh, if that's construction of a building, then we, all, we limited it to a swimming pool. What are we going to do with where the swimming pool was once we build a new one? Uh, are we going to build something there? Uh, what's going to happen? Uh, last uh, year, uh, council approved, and I believe it expended some money uh, on the Guande Preserve and the uh, Dollar Park, and we were, got the idea of trying to uh, attach that to Camp Rotan, maybe build some trails. Uh, we can accept, build accessibility of our, as I interpreted it, our existing trails and our existing playgrounds and everything, but if we build a shelter house at Sells Park, which was in the plan as a potential, how, how can we do that under this uh, you know, these, this, this source of funds. Um, also, I've seen a whole plan from the soccer people about <laughs> a facility uh, that's there uh, that, you know, they would like to see the city, uh, you know, move toward. Uh, so those are just some of the things that I, I, we see uh, on the advisory board of potential uh, ones, and that's just the ones we know of today. If in 20 years, I'm sure, there's going to be something that the kids of the community and the adults are going to want that we've never even heard of yet. Uh, and so that's why I ask for some the flexibility in there. I know it makes it a little bit harder to sell, you know, in some ways, but the advisory board is, is going to try to, you know, speak at different engagements, and I'm hoping all council members can, and we're, we're committed to seeing this, not just see the process end when you pass this, but when the voters pass it. Thank you, Mary. Any other questions or comments or thoughts on that? Any other council members? Well, I, I think from an advisory board, we asked for citizens to sit on an advisory board, and they've done a heck of a job with their master plan and the effort and time they put into that. Um, I think, you know, we should consider looking at the language in, that, in those terms. Um, and, and I think if, if we can present to the voters out there um, the importance of livability and having flexibility when you're looking at a plan like that, again, everything would have to be vetted. I mean, just because the soccer people wanted one thing doesn't mean the other people can't have what they want. I mean, this all goes through a process, and there's usually a committee, and there's lots of discussion. So, um, you know, I... I would suggest that there has been a lot of work on that, that that is a reasonable item that um, former, former Abel is suggesting in terms of the language. So. Thank you, Mayor Patterson. Mayor Patterson. I just <clears throat> have a, a brief comment that I want to make, um, which has to do with, with, again, the advisory board um, and the work that has gone into this. I also want to acknowledge Dr. Mary James, who did a lot of the early survey work in 2012, 2013, if I'm not mistaken, um, in which, you know, and that, that I think gives some, some history to the scope of thought that has gone into this particular piece of legislation, which is community involvement. Um, you know, over 200 people asked to to give their input is what they see are the important goals for our arts, parks, and recreation, which includes arts, parks, and recreation. So it's the it's the entire package. Um, and you know, again, to point out out of that plan, as I look at it, you know, things such as providing arts, parks, and recreation facilities that are, are of high quality, well maintained, and reflect the history and culture of the city of Athens, is one of the number one goals. It's on there. So. I, I also agree with flexibility, um, as former Mayor Rick Abel was suggesting, um, uh, with how this goes forward, um, but also not detracting from the language to where it becomes cumbersome um, when it's looked at. But I am highly in support of this moving forward because, I, again, looking at where th I think sh things should go and where I think the citizens believe 
our arts, parks, and recreation will be, should be moving forward in the future um, would reflect that in this particular level. Thank you. And maybe it's more a legal question, is that you want to say? Oh, well, no, I was just going to say in Section 2, the last uh, phrase, it says, it, it talked about everything, and then it says maintenance, operation, staffing of existing and new arts, parks, and recreation facilities and grounds in the city of Athens. So it almost seems to me that what the mayor was talking about is already in this ordinance. It, and it I was covers. likewise thinking perhaps that the phrase above it, I know there's some question, but the, the accessibility to all playgrounds, trails, and facilities. Yeah. So if there's a new piece, right. then it becomes mm -hmm. part of all. And my, my only concern is, is that, you know, and, and uh, former Mayor Abel has said, you know, you don't, do you, you don't want to risk having it too vague, too open. Yeah. That, uh, but I hear what you're saying. You don't want to box yourself in. So you're saying in your interpretation of all, that would be current or future? Right. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, but so, so I mean, it's, so it, it says new. It does on the next line down. Where's the word new? Right here. Uh, next to last line. Oh, and new parks. operation, okay. maintenance operation, staffing of existing and new arts, parks, and recreation facilities. See, you guys did a great job in putting this together, <laughs> especially Debbie. <laughs> You're welcome. Got a lot in it. There is a lot in it. Any other, any other questions or comments regarding? Correct. Yeah. This Correct. first reading for ordinance. What about acquisition? Acqui the, the comment of acquisition. Yeah, that was your one thought of the yeah. acquisition there. Yeah. It's not the about acquisition. Uh, and yeah. do uh, do we lean on the law director for uh, guidance <laughs> on that one, or is it something we can continue to look at? I mean, it's, it's not it's, it's not really a straight legal question in terms of what I mean. It makes reference to new facilities and grounds, mm -hmm. uh, which would seem to uh, you know, obviously that if we were to acquire new facilities and grounds, that would have to come from somewhere. But um, you've also got a, a little bit of a timing issue here, just in that this has to be submitted to the Board of Elections uh, and finalized by you know, by a month from now. So I suppose there could be special sessions or, or something to get that done. But we are um, this has been discussed for for some amount of time, and we do need to have a final piece of legislation that we can move at some point. So are there thoughts then that we might need to amend it this evening to include the phrase, the word acquisition, uh, and, and erring on a side of caution, and valuing transparency, and open communication <laughs> with our... Well, I kind of heard the opposite, that we don't need, really need that word. Okay. That's what I heard. That's, that's what I said, but yeah. it doesn't hurt to be superfluous, I guess. That sounds like government, right? Yeah, that's, a, that's an extra word thrown in. I, I think after rereading it, I'm I'm good to go with the way it's uh, the way it's written. It says all, and it says new. I don't know if acquisition needs to be in there. I don't but know. this is just first reading. Correct. Right. So it can always be amended it, at it, another point. If you would choose to amend it, it goes back to first reading. First reading, so. and then possible suspension if. Case scenario. Well, we're no. Today to suspense. I mean, good, yeah, yeah. I suppose, but Not for special that. session, this it would be. We are more going to have one next week. Okay. We're having a special session to to for transportation next week. Yeah, we're going on recess very soon. Okay. So leave it as is. Is that the uh, is that the consensus? Uh, My feeling is go is go with what we have. Any other thoughts? Administration? Paula? Safety I, director? I, I, you know, I, I brought it up. Um, you, you've heard from the um, former Mayor Abel on behalf of the advisory board, and, um, and if the law director feels like it's 
clear enough, cover, and we good. Okay. Member Patterson. Thank you, Paula. Okay. Member Patterson. Yeah, I, you know, I know that in the past couple of years, anyway, that we have acquired several properties, um, the Hope property for one, uh, the Dollar property is another one that was recently acquired and it is passive recreation space or place space that's being planned for development of trails and whatnot. Um, and so that's my only comment with this, knowing that there were there has been monies that were allocated appropriated to have those go through. Um, and just wondering if the language is is so inclusive for the acquisition of future properties if something were to come along to where there was a possibility of acquiring a parcel. Which of course you would still be able to do, just not out of this particular out of this particular yes. Okay. Because those funds did not come out of uh, the current levy or any other for that matter. Okay. Point yeah, I want to be clear. I, I'm, not say, I'm not saying that the current language allows for acquisition of new property out of this fund. I don't think it does. So if that is council's intent is to now add that as yet another some thing that can be spent uh, as part of this, this levy, then I think that would require an amendment. But okay. So suggestion to error in covering all of our bases would be to include the word acquisition. I'm not suggesting that. You're not suggesting that. Some, some seem to Catching. be, and we just need to. OK. <laughs> Either we're asking to amend or we're Well, not, my so. question would be, where would we insert that? Um, because, you know, at the first, the sentence regarding the swimming pool, it can't, it can't go there. So it would have to go in the last section, right? Including accessibility to all playgrounds, trails, and facilities, maintenance, operation, and staffing of existing and new arts, parks, and recreation facilities and grounds in the city of Athens. So if we want to insert, um, Property acquisition. It would, I believe, it would need to be in that final section. And I guess when you're referring to new, you're referring to the new pool or new. When you say new, what are you referring to? It says. It says new arts, parks, and recreation facilities. And grounds. So, so that se and seems to cover almost everything, as far as I can tell. But. Well, it, it seems to me that it's referring to maintenance and operation okay. and staffing. Not the buying them. Then, just to be safe, put acquisition in there somewhere. Put semicolon acquisition, semicolon, and go on with the rest of it. Well, that would require an amendment. Could mm -hmm. right, which sets it back to first reading. Which is to which, yeah, which is well, to well, right. We wouldn't lose you're any time as long safe. as we did it now. So. We have to do it now. Is there a motion? For uh, anyone to, I move that we insert the phrase <laughs> "property acquisition" to cover all bases um, in in uh, the final section of section two. Thank you, Captain. So inserting it before the word maintenance. So after accessibility to all play playgrounds, trails, facilities, semicolon. Acquisition, Acquisition, maintenance, maintenance operations, operation, and, and staffing. staffing. Can I make a suggestion? I hate to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this, this we welcome, we welcome your guidance. Um, would, it, would it not be more appropriate to put it so after, it says December 31st, 2035, for the purpose of paying any and all expenses associated with the acquisition, construction, equipment, furnishing? Well, I guess that, that would just That's really directly to the service. Cool. I, I see. Cool. Okay. I see that. Okay. So I'm sorry, Member Cochran, exactly where was the? I think you, before maintenance would be an appropriate place. But we do need property acquisition, not just acquisition, because we're not talking about acquisition of a track hoe or acquisition of other, other, yeah, other facilities. We're talking about specifically the possibility of property acquisition. So the amendment is to insert property acquisition uh, directly before maintenance with another semicolon. Is that correct? Right. Because that final semicolon, after the final semicolon, which is accessibility to, to all playgrounds, comma, trails, and facilities, as I'm reading it, it does mean that it's, it's specific to the maintenance, operations, and staffing of existing and new arts, parks, and recreational mm -hmm. facilities, but it's just the maintenance, operation, and staffing. Yeah, no, I think that's right. 
Yeah. Zero second on that. So we want a property acquisitions, and do we want a semicolon after that or a comma? Because it has a very different yeah. meaning. Just ask her. I believe it's a separate item, just as accessibility to all playgrounds, trails, and facilities. Separate phrase, property acquisition. See, and I think, <laughs> I personally think that it should be um, a comma because the very end of the last statement speaks to grounds in the city of Athens. And property would be that, would be grounds. And therefore, not having to worry about whether well, you're purchasing a structure or you're purchasing, purchasing land. land. And it's because it's that sentence speaks to sentence. That section speaks to both. And so to have it just become acquisition, comma, maintenance, comma, operations and staffing would suffice. Without having a standalone um, statement in there that speaks specifically to land acquisition alone. Yeah, but, but we need to clarify the motion. Yes. Right. 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 So. right. I'll go with the comma. So I move. So no that, semicolon, but now comma. That we insert the phrase property acquisition. I don't believe we need an S. After the word facilities and the semicolon, and before the word maintain, maintenance with a comma following. So you are saying property acquisition. Right. Okay. okay. Is that a motion? We do have a motion. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to amend Ordinance 5414, and I believe the clerk has the details. <laughs> and I believe we're all on the same page that we all understand the motion here. Okay. All right, all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, signify by same sign. Okay, all in favor. Mm -hmm. It has been amended. Uh -huh. It's amended. And we need to reread it. It's been read for the first time. It's been okay. read for the first time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is it time to go home and eat dinner yet? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, we have another one. I'm missing the USA World Cup game. Hopefully they're winning. Okay, we are on ordinance. 5514, an ordinance amending the 24, 2014 appropriation ordinance, and this is introduced by Council Member Nisley. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the particular items listed in this appropriation ordinance were discussed in Finance Committee meeting last week, but I'll briefly review them. Am I sensing uh, that we need to suspend? Mr. President, Mr. Acting President, I uh, um, move that we consider this ordinance under suspension of rules. Second. The purpose being that we have several expenses, um, including um, uh, purchase of a van and bus for our transit system, and also uh, new purchase <coughs> of a track hoe that we do not have functioning for the city at this point. Thank you, Member Nicely. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules uh, for ordinance 5514. All those in favor of suspension of the rules, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay. The uh, ordinance is under suspension. Thank you, Mr. President. I move adoption of Ordinance 5514. Second. Second. And this particular ordinance covers items that were discussed last week, but very briefly to review them. Um, in Section 1, we will have certain funds appropriated. The first item is 1000 $22.38, and these are for return of unclaimed funds. These are for some uh, taxes and other items that uh, are in need of refunds. The next item is $40,000 being appropriated to the tourism fund. Uh, as explained, this is part of the transient guest tax that we collect. Uh, during the year and the money is there it now needs to be appropriated so that we can honor our contracts with the Tourism Bureau. 
The next item is $100,000 to the Transportation Assistance Fund, and these, as mentioned, are the, uh, the van and bus purchase for the Athens Transit Program. And then $19,000 to the Sewer Debt Fund for transfer, and you will see down in section number two then that we transfer that money once it's appropriated to the Sewer Maintenance Fund. And what this does is allow us to have sufficient funds in the um, sewer fund so that we can purchase the flush truck that needs to be replaced uh, from the accident that occurred several weeks ago. And um, that is, I believe, all. And then it appropriates the 19000 um, from the sewer maintenance fund. Thank you, Reverend Eisler. So we have a motion and a second, correct, to adopt Ordinance 5514. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 5614, an ordinance authorizing disposal of a damaged track hoe and flush truck in the Public Works Department, authorizing the Service Safety Director to replace the two vehicles and declaring an emergency, introduced by Council Member Pappy. Thank you, President Pro Tem. Um, I move to suspend 5614. Second. Second. So as we just heard with the ordinance before, we're purchasing um, the new track hoe in the flush truck. Well, we need to dispose of the old ones uh, for trade-in or whatever is happening there. So we need to move forward with um, this replacement ordinance or disposal ordinance. Thank you, Mayor Pepe. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules of Ordinance 5614. All those in favor of suspension, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The ordinance is under suspension. So we move to adopt 5614. Second. So let's do it. That's what we're doing. Okay. We're adopting. Super. Okay. We have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance 5614. All those in favor? Please signify by saying aye. 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 Tell the same sign. The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 5714, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute the Ohio F fiscal year 2014 community development block grant allocated allocation program residential anti-displacement and relocation assistance plan and declaring an emergency. This is introduced by Council Member Reisner. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. Um, this ordinance, in brief, uh, just has two sections. Um, I've already read the, the title. Uh, the main section is the mayor is hereby authorized to execute the uh, Ohio Fiscal Year 2014 Community Development Block Grant Allocation Program Residential Anti-Displacement Relocation Assistant Plan. That's the key word here attached here to and incorporated therein by reference the section to a very emergency for the application deadline. On the back of the ordinance is the actual plan itself, and it uh, uh, covers a, a lot of detail, but the, essentially the uh, new plan has to be submitted because uh, the old ones have been amended and requires a new plan to be submitted. So the City of Athens will replace all occupied and vacant, occupiable, low and moderate income dwelling units demolished or converted to use other than low to moderate income housing as direct result of activities uh, assigned with funds, uh, assisted with funds provided under the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended and as described in 24 CFR 570.488 HUD regulations have extended this requirement to the HOME program as well. And then we have a list of what the actual plan will, will cover and um, it goes on so we can read all of it or we can move to adopt, move to adopt so Remember, I yes the rules. I, I am requesting suspension okay because of the deadline it's June 20th well, uh, right. 
Well, first of all, then I will move that we suspend the rules. Second. Thank you. We have, a, um, and, uh, and for the reasons stated by um, the executive branch, we have a motion and a second to suspend the rules for ordinance 5714. Thank you. All those in favor of suspension only, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. I move to adopt 5714. Second. Already given my spiel, so super. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to adopt ordinance 5714. All those in favor of accepting the ordinance, please signify by saying aye. 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 Close same sign. The ordinance has been adopted. Yeah, she's doing Moving on to resolution for third reading. We have resolution R0914, a resolution declaring it necessary to replace existing curb and sidewalks deemed in poor condition as part of the West Union Street Infrastructure Improvement Project and declaring an emergency. Introduced by Councilmember Pappy. Thank you. Um, I move to adopt R0914. Second. Okay. Um, this is the uh, follow-up. We've discussed this over the last uh, several meetings regarding uh, the replacement of the curbs and how that process works with the assessment and um, to the owners and the uh, parts that the city is uh, will complete, be the curbs and the, um, the accessibility um, at the crosswalks. And, so that's what this uh, this resolution is for. Thank you, Mayor Pappy. Any comments, Auditor Heck? I was just going to add that one of the reasons that the city is going to pay for these is because they will be moving the sidewalks. It's not just a repair to existing placement of the sidewalks, uh, as we usually do. So uh, the city will be paying for the sidewalks and the curbs. That's oh, I, I think uh, this is yeah. West Union I'm talking no. about. No. This is Union, and that's why we're paying for it. I thought this was a resolution of necessity for assessing the sidewalk owners on West Union Street. That's, it is, but it, that's what it is. It is. It is, it but if you look at Section 7, the cost of said sidewalk and curb improvements shall be paid for street rehab funding. Well, we have to pay them. them. <laughs> People are, we, have, we incur the cost. I mean, right. We incur the costs and pay for the initial to the contractor or whatever, but then they are assessed just like we've done with all our other assessments. So they're going to be assessed on Union Street, but not on Richland. Because in Richland, we're tearing it up and not, and then all right. we're moving it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. if I may. We I mean, just want to be clear on that. We've had some discussion about this because we sure. typically do assess. For Richland Avenue, the street on both sides is being widened by five feet, so therefore those sidewalks truly are being pushed back five feet as opposed to the Richland Avenue. I'm sorry, the Union, the Union <laughs> West Union Street project mm -hmm. where there isn't widening going on. So, so. it's just a, it's an Verification. assessment. We've had this discussion, but I got confused because we typically, the property owners pay for the sidewalks. So we are going to assess them. As they've most recently done on Lancaster Street and several of our other sure. projects that we've done. This is not out of the ordinary. Um, I, this is a process we've now been, been doing. Yeah, and it does, it does say, the, the whereas says that they shall be assessed against the properties. Okay. To be benefit. So okay. We, so we're, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. So we have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 0914. Um, all those in favor of accepting uh, the ordinance, I'm sorry, the resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. The resolution has been passed. So, moving on to announcements and other business, 
We do have uh, a motion to accept the auditor's um, financial reports from May of 2014. Is there a motion to? I so move to approve the auditor's the financial reports for May. Thank you. Second. Second. So a motion and a second. All those in favor of accepting the report of the auditor's uh, May 2014 financial reports, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. It's been accepted. Uh, under announcements and other business, I do believe we also have <laughs> Information regarding a public hearing, Monday, July 7th, 2014, at 7 p.m., correct? Here, is that upstairs here? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that will be re regarding the revolving loan funds for the Athens Community Center playground wheelchair accessibility matting. Any other announcements and other business? Opportunity for citizens to speak on legislative items and city services not covered on the agenda. Anyone in our audience wishing to speak this evening? Doesn't appear to be so. Thank you. Yes. Are there any committees wishing to meet next week? Finance and, finance and personnel. And then Thank you. special session. And then should we do transportation? Transportation. Yes. So we have transportation, city, finance, city safety and services, city services, safety. Anyone else wishing to schedule a meeting, please contact the clerk. Otherwise, we are adjourned at or around the time of 8 to 28 p.m. Thank you and have a good evening.